Hey, how's it going? I've been seeing a lot of guys talking lately about porting cylinder heads and the gains that can be had. So we had the conversation about the LS engine and how great their heads were. Well, we really have the opportunity with these old engines to make these heads just as good, if not better, based on our own labor. So I want to talk to you guys today about how we're going to do that and how we're going to improve our stock cylinder heads to make them LS hunters. For some people, porting cylinder heads is absolute witchcraft, but with today's technology and information at our fingertips, it really shouldn't be anymore. So we're going to take a little bit of a dive into that so that we can demystify a lot of the witchcraft. First, let's take a look at what this actually does for your engine. So the largest thing that's going to happen is it's going to increase airflow. Well, a lot of people get stuck in the raw CFM or the peak CFM. We need to look at the actual full curve here. If we are increasing only peak CFM, we're not actually helping that much. When you think about it this way, your cam really spends a very little amount of time at peak lift, right? So it's going up and back down. And during these two chunks, it has the, the time period where it's going to be mid lift. So it's important that your head flows well in mid lift. So the goal here is to have the lowest intake CC while also having the most intake flow. And this also applies to the exhaust as well. So a lot of guys are bragging about their 0 0.6, 0 0.7 flow numbers. I really don't care. I wanna know what they're flowing at 0.2 through about through 0.4, maybe even 0.5. I wanna know what the flow is up until that point. Because there's a lot of times that we can get beat these guys off the line and get our stellar 60 foots, get things moving and just light to light, rock these guys world. As many of you guys know, I primarily worked on Pontiacs and have a lot of Pontiac information at my fingertips. So we're going to take a look at Pontiac here. Though this does apply to small block Chevy, um, small block Ford, Mopars, you name it. It pretty much works for it. Um, this information does, however, primarily uh, skew more towards 60s and 70s vehicles. Cylinder heads back then just weren't what they are today. With computers really checking over everything, modern cylinder heads are significantly better than they were. So this really doesn't apply to modern cylinder heads, but... But with modern cylinder heads, you can definitely tweak them a little bit to get some gains. So our engine for this is just a basic 400 with a 2802, 6x4 heads, um, and an RPM dual plane performer intake manifold with a 750 carb. Um, it's actually more like 800 because it's been a little kind of worked over. But that's pretty much what we're running today. So let's take a look at my screen and look at kind of how porting your cylinder heads will impact your engine and how you need to port them to maximize your build. So the first thing we're going to look at is our intake table. So we're going to see that we flow 211, 202, 187. So we flow okay throughout the board. Um, you see the efficiency is actually pretty decent for, for where it is in the range. But we definitely have room we can make up here at 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Now Pontiac exhaust is usually not great. So we're going to see a large change here. This is going to be really low flow, um, so it's pretty easy to make that just increase with just basic work. Pontiacs are notorious for having flashing in the... the Pontiacs are, are notorious for having flashing inside the heads, so you can make big differences really quickly and easily without worrying about ruining your heads. We're going to end up around 418 horsepower, 5,000 RPM. That's pretty much what we should expect here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be impacting uh, porting of this. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my ported heads on. Um, this is 6x4 ported heads or hand ported heads. So uh, we're going to throw these on here. Now you'll also notice when I get to this screen, you're going to see the port volume has also changed, which is an increase in the average port diameter as well. So that is actually going to help us have more air inside the plenum. And what that's going to do is to increase our higher RPM. Now it's also going to decrease the port velocity so just keep that in mind is as you're increasing volume you're decreasing port velocity so before we dive in actually checking these engines back to back i want to talk about one thing really quickly and that is your cam size so your cam will dictate kind of where your engine's wanting to breathe so with that being said this 2802 is a pretty small cam really it's a 0 0.466 0 0.488 lift it's not crazy it's not huge so it's not going to make a huge difference with our numbers but that being said what we're going to see here is going from that flow number of 211 to 255, this 255 is irrelevant. We do not see this number. This 255 does not exist to us. This 0.5 does not exist to us. This 0.4 is where what we care about here because of our cam. You know, now, yes, this is a big gain, but I want to make a point here that this car is going to feel a little more lethargic down low. Um, and what that is caused by is this. So the increasing of the port CCs actually decreased the port velocity. 
So that's what you're seeing here, the loss of torque. But with big gains up top, because it can move more air. Now, that being said, let's save this so we have a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back comparison. So let's talk really quickly about why and how I pick a cam for this engine. So what I'm going to do here is I know my heads flow 255 at 0.6. So that's a pretty big jump from 5 to 6 here. So if 0.5 was 246 and 0.6 was like 250, I wouldn't care. And honestly, getting to that full 0.6 is not a big deal to me. But that being said, we want to make sure that we're going to get our peak when we can get our peak. So we want to go to a high lift cam, more than likely. And we want to go to a fairly high lift cam for the exhaust as well. Um, you see the way it evacuates is significantly better than it was before. So we're going to look for a pretty high lift cam. So our entire goal right now is not to make this engine drivable, not to make it fantastic. We're going to just throw things at it because I want to show you guys what the numbers do. So we're going to try to find a cam that matches that 0.6. Um, the LSA is likely going to be like a 108, I think. I think we're going to find a Howard cam. I think there's a 4.7 swap cam that we can use for this. But let's take a peek at that, and I'll show you guys kind of how I find these cams on the websites. So the proper filter set, we can start beginning looking at our search. So we know that we want a hydraulic roller tappet cam for this. We also know what our lift is going to be. Okay. Ah, okay, I was right. <laughs> so we're going to use the 0 0.6, I think this is a 240-something, 243, 249. Yep, so this is what we're going to use, 106 or 108 degree LSA. Yep, okay. So 4.7 firing swap order. So what that's going to do is that's going to swap the firing for the 4 and 7 cylinder. Um, so people say it gets you more efficiency. I'm not quite sure. I haven't really dabbled with it myself. I don't really care to, to be honest with you. I don't think it's worth the time. But... We'll come back to that at a later date when I feel like playing with that. But for now, let's just take a look at this and see what we end up with. Okay, so with all that thrown in there, let's take a peek at what we end up with for the actual horsepower and torque of this engine with this optimized cam. So you see we have a higher peak, higher average all the way around. Let's take a look at the actual chart though. So with that increased duration, we actually see a lot of loss on the low end. So what we can actually do is we'll take a look at that Summit 2802 again, and I'll show you guys how to optimize this cam. So engines like the 350s, the 400s, they like a smaller duration cam. So what you can do is we'll take that Summit uh, 2802 again, throw some uh, 0.65 rockers on it. And you see it, it didn't give us the full thing, but it got us quite a bit of the way there. And actually, it brought our average torque up pretty well. Our peak horsepower up fairly well, but our average horsepower is down. So what we're actually seeing here is the lower duration is acting and filling this this engine better. So it's not always necessarily about just getting the right lift. People say all the time, well, my cam does you know this lift and my head is this lift. That's not necessarily all that matters. What matters is that you're efficiently pulling in and releasing that pressure. You know, And that matters not just at the peak, but getting to the peak. I mean, your engine isn't just always at 5,000 RPM or 6,000 RPM. It's also at 3,210, 4,250. You know, it, it's at different ranges throughout the entire span. Not getting the benefit of that large cam. You know, because like, let's take the same exact cam. So let's throw this cam on. So my point here is to find the combination that is the most correct together. Um, people get caught up on the numbers, just the raw numbers of a high lift, high duration cam. That's not necessarily true. Personally, I would usually go a lower lift and a higher duration cam. To me, that's going to give the cam a larger opening time without the large shocks of the spring. Um, and that's just going to kind of help even out the engine and just kind of make it act a little more, um, a little more low end than the high lift engines. Uh, mind you, you can you can do that if you want to flow, you know, 7,000 RPM and a 400. Go ahead and do that. Use your hydration. That's fine. But for the most part, people get just lost that you don't need it until a certain point, and that point usually is like 5,500 RPM or so. Um, anything past that point, you want to start adding more duration. But if your engine really is going to live under that 5,500 RPM or so, 240 degrees is more than enough.
So improving the cylinder heads in other ways, things like removing the flashing here, or port matching the intake, which I don't necessarily advise on Pontiacs because of how close the pushrod holes are, the pushrod bosses are on the intakes on some of the early heads. Um, but the big thing is just use common sense and figure out what you need for your engine. Every cylinder head porting thing is different. Everybody does it differently. I just want to have this conversation before we really started porting cylinder heads. Um, there's going to be a time here soon where we'll be working on small block Chevy and uh, Pontiac heads. I've got a, th a few theories about things I want to run with a Pontiac head uh, on the Pontiac 350 that I've got. So I didn't want to necessarily sit down and talk to Gay about the actual gains that can be had because the gains that can be had are all over the board. You can even lose power if you port your heads wrong. I mean, today's talk really is about just kind of planning your engine out and thinking things through using common sense on where and when to modify things. You need to make full choices on how you want to do things if you want things to be conducive to what you want to do. Plan your cam out, plan your heads out, port your heads, get them flow benched if you can. If you can't, you know, build something like a half inch lift cam and you're probably more than good. But anything you do will typically help. So it's worth giving it a shot if you've got an extra set of heads around. I know on small block Chevy, especially the OD3 castings, you can see big gains. So it's worth doing if you have the time. And with winter coming up, we definitely have the time. Have a good one, guys, and I will see you on the road.